Rebuilding a model steam plant, part 6. Dismantling the Stuart No. 10V steam engine to assess the condition of the components. The port face of the cylinder needs some attention, as does the slide valve. These are simple problems, but maybe removing the paint will show further issues. In this episode, I strip down the engine and put all of the parts in my ultrasonic cleaner, which usually destroys the paint as well as cleaning the bare metal parts. In the previous episode, I showed how I removed the steam chest cover. Now I'm removing the steam chest in the same way. Be aware that these blades on Stanley knives are very sharp, so keep your hands well clear of the cutting edge. Before removing the steam chest, I need to disconnect the eccentric rod from the valve fork. With a bit of careful manipulation using the Stanley knife blade, finally I could slide the steam chest off the four studs. You can clearly see the slide valve in this clip. The first thing that I want to look at is the physical condition of both the slide valve and the port faces on the cylinder. And I must say that the port faces on the cylinder are not looking too good. This is the universal problem with cast iron steam engines. They go rusty. After a steam run it is really important to blow out all the water, put some WD-40 in its place, and also add some oil to the cylinder or any of the cast iron parts. Otherwise the internal parts of your engine will look like this or maybe even worse. What I'm doing here is cleaning up the face of the slide valve because that was quite badly marked too. After quite a lot of rubbing on a piece of 1200 grit wet or dry sandpaper using WD-40 as a lubricant, the face of the slide valve was still pitted. This is possibly due to electrolytic action between the cast iron and the gun metal. Here's a close up of the port face and it's a bit of a mess. The gasket's badly cut. I'm going to redo all of this, but not in this episode. In this episode, I'm just taking the engine apart. The only obvious damage I can see is to the shaft where the Mamod flywheel was. As a bit of an experiment, I wanted to put the engine back together and give it a quick run with the cleaned up slide valve and a partially cleaned up port face. I want to see how it runs. There isn't a gasket fitted between the steam chest cover and the steam chest, but that shouldn't matter. A bit of a leak won't make much difference to this test. I really do hate to see steam engines when every part of them has been painted. It may prevent the parts from rusting externally, but in my opinion, it looks horrific. I connected the compressed air line, lubricated all the moving parts, opened the valve slightly on the compressor and spun the flywheel. It's sounding better already. I'm going to try a warp speed test and put my finger on the flywheel to see how much power's been generated, and it's fine. When I turn the pressure up and it's still not very high, this is more than enough power to rotate the dynamo at the correct speed when it's under load. Cosmetically, this engine does not look good, but from what I'm seeing so far, it's very well made, and as time goes on, I'll find out if there are any more problems. Nothing fell off when I ran it at the very high speeds, and it also runs slowly, because I set the valve timing in the correct position. I'm going to accelerate the video footage just to get through this next bit. I'm taking the entire engine apart. And once again I'm starting with the steam chest cover followed by the steam chest. In this clip, using a small pair of pliers, I'm loosening the studs. The lock nut on the end method is far better, but these weren't very tight. I just had to initially loosen them and then they could be screwed out by finger pressure alone. This next bit I find really satisfying. I'm a bit strange, but I like removing old gaskets, because they're usually horrible like this one and it's nice to get the engine part back to bare metal. For the next part of the job, I'll be removing the cylinder cover. Then hopefully I'll be able to screw the piston out of the crosshead, but be aware this is not always the case. I want to get rid of these short pieces of pipe soldered into the drain cocks, for two reasons. Small pieces of pipe like this tend to block up, and in my opinion, these drain cocks look so wrong 
on such a small engine, they are massively over scale. I noticed the usual problem with the grub screw in the flywheel. It's a slot headed grub screw, and as usual, half of it has broken off. This can be a problem if the grub screw is short, but in this case, the grub screw isn't short, and I could grab it with a pair of pliers and unscrew it that way. This part is a pain, and I can't really get a socket onto the bolt. It's time for the vigorous use of a small spanner. And the bad news was, the bolts didn't become loose as they came out of the cylinder. It looked like it was going to be spannering all the way. Then I had an idea. Why not remove the box bed? This will allow me to use the same socket and socket driver to remove the securing bolts from underneath the cylinder. Time for a bit of an intermission. I'd like to show you this. This is a digital microscope that my daughter Charlotte bought me, and this is what I use it for. Alas, I'm no longer a young man and my eyesight's not what it used to be, but it is with this. I can clearly see that this is a 6BA tap. I do need to make a guide to sit the taps in, because it was difficult to hold it in the right position. A piece of metal with a groove milled in it should work fine. As you've just seen under the microscope, this is a 6BA high-speed steel tap. I don't often use high-speed steel taps for a reason, and it's not an economy measure. High-speed steel tooling is better than carbon steel tooling, it lasts longer and it doesn't break as easily. But over the years, I've found benefits in using carbon steel taps and dies. You stand a good chance of shattering a carbon steel tap using a centre punch not forgetting to use a hammer with the centre punch. But I don't think centre punches will shatter high-speed steel, but they shatter carbon steel very well. The hole was successfully re-tapped in the eccentric sheave, and after I put this tap back in the special box marked 6BA, I took all of the parts that I dismantled through into the kitchen. And here I'm placing the engine components in this wire basket. You will notice that the piston isn't in amongst these parts. That's because it doesn't need to be. In the next episode, I'll show you how I fit an O-ring to it. The good news was it was easy to remove it from the crosshead. This is a shot of my kitchen sink area. And this is my collection of small skulls and other bizarre things. The chemistry apparatus was used in a video quite a few years back. And these glass condensers and bits and pieces were just too nice to throw away. One of the advantages of living by oneself is you can have an ultrasonic cleaner on the draining board of the kitchen sink, right next to a collection of skulls and chemistry apparatus. I tipped a full pan of hot water into the ultrasonic cleaner, then I topped it up with some boiling water from the kettle. After doing this, I put the basket full of engine components into the cleaner, and added some of this stuff. It's called Carbusonic EP24R Ultrasonic Cleaning Solution. This stuff's really good. It doesn't attack aluminium. I find this stuff really good to clean mammod parts. Not that I do that very often, but at least it doesn't dissolve the wheels like some cleaners do. I set the heating and timing controls and press the button to start the machine. This may be an ultrasonic cleaner and it does work, but it makes a very strange noise which is definitely not ultrasonic. I'm going to leave the engine parts in this machine for about an hour. I'm really hoping it's going to remove the paint. It usually does. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.